Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, I would like to try and make some abstract percussion. I'm going to explore some sound design ideas and make some sort of textural percussive sort of baseline drum kind of hybrid and then apply some interesting effects processing techniques to kind of make this eerie, slightly unsettling techno drum and bass. I don't know, but it's going to be quite dark and eerie and could work in any kind of electronic music where you want to go a little bit dark. It's going to be very percussive, but quite musical at the same time. And I hope that you enjoy it very much. I'm going to mostly use Collision, but I'm also quite interested in exploring some of the stuff in Meld. Meld has um, these resonant uh, filters here, the plate resonator and the membrane resonator, which are scale aware. So I'm interested to sort of try and use those for some sound design. But I'm going to start with Collision because that's what I used when I was practicing this. So, yeah, I'm going to sort of make some weird sort of physical modeling donk sprawling. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm just going to make some riffs and see what I come up with. So first I'm going to draw in uh, some notes on C1 um, and let's see what that's like. Right. So this is just the default collision sound, which I'm sure we've all heard loads of times. And uh, I can ping this all into one screen now. It's very, very nice. Um, and so I'm going to apply a little bit of chance here. Let's turn the pen off and maybe just pull all these down. And I'm going to get the velocity and pull all of these down to like here and apply some of this deviation so that I can randomize the velocity. This is what we get now. Now, collision isn't responding to any sort of velocity stuff yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's start with Resonator 1. I quite like the pipe. I'm going to use the pipe here. And I'm going to see if I can use some of the velocity stuff to kind of move around this decay and radius. So I'm going to go to the MIDI and MPE tab. And let's try with Res 1 Decay. So let's set that to about 50% and the radius to minus 50%. So you can hear how when the velocity gets randomized, it kind of changes the decay and the radius of this pipe resonator. Very nice. Let's add some pitch envelope. Tasty. Already that's pretty tasty. Right, let's... Um, uh, yeah, uh, let's flick on the scale awareness and say we want C Phrygian, which is mode three. One, two, three. Mode three of the major scale. <clears throat> and it's pretty dark because it's already got a minor second as the next note. So if I was to now go to the MIDI effects and pull in the random, where are you? Look through this little letterbox in the browser, <laughs> pull in the random, turn on the scale awareness and flick up the chance. Let's go bi-directional. This is absolutely one of the best things <laughs> in Live 12. How much time does that save just flicking the random into scale awareness and you've basically just got random notes in pitch. Um, I'm going to turn the voices to mono and put retrig on. Just want to check that retrig actually, when enabled, notes which are already played will be retriggered rather than generating an additional voice. Turning the song to save CPU. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so now I'm going to root the first resonator into resonator two, which is basically just going to be the same. Wow. Whoa, mummy. Right, uh, let's uh, get a limiter in here because we don't want to blow up the entire world. Right. Cool. It's like having a spa holiday in a freight tanker. Sort of weirdly relaxing, but sort of not at the same time. I love it. Right. I'm not sure what this button does. Ah, it copies the parameters. Ah, that's good. Okay, so I wonder... All right, so I clicked that button and that just basically copies Resonator 1 to Resonator 2. Didn't actually know that. Um, right, so does that mean that Resonator 2 has the same MIDI routings? It does. How very interesting. Does it? No. Oh, that says radius. Uh, radius. 
Yes. Uh, okay, let's put these in the opposite direction to this one. So decay was at 50, so let's put that to minus 50 and the radius to 50. Right, so now I want to maybe explore ways that I could use the, um, well, we could try the LFO. Uh, we've used the velocity for the radius and decay stuff. Let's see if we can use the LFO. Let's set this LFO1 to a random, turn the rate down, make sure retrigger is on, and assign that to the mallet stiffness. now so the noise is um pretty interesting the mallet just sort of uh, uses like i think i think like a noise algorithm to just send a tiny little burst of noise but the but the noise actually allows uh, you to sort of um apply envelopes and stuff to the noise which is very good for making bowed sounds or fluty windy woo sounds <laughs> i don't know what windy woo is but <laughs> Um, but I'm going to use the noise and maybe play around with the frequency because you can route um, a modulation source to, I believe, the noise frequency, which is here. So let's use the same LFO settings. Let's turn the rate all the way down and see what we get there. Yes. Let's go a little faster. It's Thursday. Well, it is when I shot this video. It might be Friday by the time it's coming. Okay, let's pull the decay down a little bit on both of these. And let's apply a pitch envelope to the second resonator. Tasty. Okay, let's close the uh, sequencer down. I don't need that right now. Um, okay, so let's maybe drive it a little bit. Um, could use raw. Uh, you don't need Live 12 to do this. I mean, you can essentially, you can use any physical modeling VST you like, or if you're in Live 11, Live 10 or whatever, and you have collision, you can do that. Um, in fact, you can do this in any piece of software you like. But, um, let's compress this here. sort of percussive it's very rhythmic but uh, it could kind of work as a bass line so that was kind of what i was going for when i said we're going for maybe like a bass and a drum hybrid element for something that could become a track maybe i could uh, use the multi-band to bring out some of these highs quite like doing this with the high pass here pulling that down and then cranking this up So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample uh, some passages of this and then apply some effects to add more texture. So let's just record, um, I don't know, something like four bars or however long I feel like until, until I get bored. Uh, okay, that's eight bars. Let's do 16. Let's do 16 bars. That was pretty nice. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save um, save this for later. I'm going to take a duplicate of this resample track. And on this one, 
Let's have a listen to this. So this is what we've just resampled. Okay, let's reverse it. Where's the reverse button? Where, there it is. Let's reverse it. And let's play around with the transients of the, of the beats warping and see. That's good. So what I'm going to do now, now that that's reversed, I'm going to apply some strange delays and reverbs to this reversed version, resample that and then reverse that. And then we'll kind of get sounds before they actually happen. It's a very cool old school technique of making things sound sort of very eerie and they kind of warp the fabric of space and time because you're hearing stuff before it even really happens. It's a classic thing. They've done it in horror movies to make people sound scary or demonic or whatever. And it's great for percussion, I think. Just a really fun trick to try on anything. So I've set it to beats and I've pulled the transients down. So I'm just letting through only these little blips. That's pretty cool. So you can hear that it's still reversed. Um, but we're only letting little bits of the sound through because I want to use those little blips to trigger reverbs and delays and stuff. So let's start by making some sort of strange um, audio effect. Right, let's just pull in the reverb here and drop it on here. And maybe what I might do is just um, do a quick high pass. I know you can do it on the reverb. I just do it like that way by habit. All right, let's group that. And I'm going to create like several instances of different reverbs and delays. So now let's pull in maybe something like the um, the echo here. You can use whatever ones you want. Let's solo this. Put this to milliseconds. You have to be careful with echo because it can get very frightening once you go above 70%. Let's try 69%. And let's apply some modulation. The Echo's got its own internal modulator, which is very nice. Turn the phase all the way down. Set this to something like 1 over... Uh, no, let's go down here. 1 over one over 2. Try times 4. Yeah, that's weird enough. <laughs> okay, let's do another one, but a slightly more rhythmic delay this time. Yeah, that's good. And let's have another one of those, but this one will set to 16th notes. Yeah, tasty. All right, uh, maybe a couple more. Maybe we could do something with the spectral time. Spectral time is pretty cool. What's spectral blur? I've never seen that before. Okay, right. Okay, so this will do like a bit of crossfade here like this. The interval could be every bar. Actually, let's do the fade out. Maybe we could try the on -sides. Try low resolution. Okay, again, I'm just going to do a quick high pass before it goes in. Now, it's important that we keep uh, the dry wet maybe about 50% on all of these. Um, although I didn't do it there, but that's okay. Let's put that in now. Okay. Um, any more that I could do? Maybe we could, um, b -b 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 do like a grain delay. Let's try the grain delay on here and set the feedback quite high. Put this to milliseconds. Yeah. Grain delay, what a classic. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of these chains here and go distribute ranges equally. And then I'm going to pull in an LFO 
set it to map the chain selector. Ah. There we go. Right, set it to remote. And then uh, set this to, well, we've got some different waveforms here. Let's try stray and uh, set this to maybe go for like a bar. So every once in a while, it's just going to switch to these different chains. Yeah. Maybe some of these, uh, maybe this reverb could have a slightly longer delay time. Maybe this echo could have slightly more feedback. This could have slightly more feedback. This one. Okay, so now I'm going to resample that again to here. And yeah, let's just do that right now. Can't see if that one's even actually going. What's going on there? Is that a bug? Okay, there we go. It's coming to the end. Yes, that one was good. Right, we're going to hit stop now. Okay, let's keep that one there. Stop it. Let's duplicate this one, delete that one, and delete that one, and listen to these two together. So this is the forwards one, the original. And this is our resample with all our effects on. It's a little sort of quiet, but that's okay. Now that looks forwards, but actually we want to reverse it because the original was reversed. So let's reverse this. And then this is actually going to match up with this original one now because this is now this one. The, 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 it's very confusing. Let's just listen to it. and maybe compress them like a complete balloon. Uh, let's maybe try it with, let's try the drum bus first, see what that's like. We can maybe OTT this, um, this one because it's sort of a little bit quiet. We don't want to take all the dynamics out. Let's just see what it's like anyway for a laugh. Hang on a minute, let's go to... OGT, put that in there, and maybe pull the amount down to something like 40%. All right, let's bring in some drums for some context. Side chain this off the kick. Uh, let's maybe do that with just the normal compressor. Where is that there? Yes, let's put it. I mean, we've already squashed it. Um, but anyway, let's try it. Side chain. We'll go from kick here. <laughs> All right, 
I am pleased with that. Now I just want to have a look at Meld for a second and um, see what happens with these uh, scale aware resonant resonator plate membrane things. We could maybe try it on two, um, two of the engines at once because I believe that they kind of go in separate uh, channels, which is pretty nice. I wonder if the, um, I suspect the filters aren't polyphonic, but uh, anyway, let's just stop all the clips a second. And uh, let's just draw in like, um, well, actually, let's take this same clip from Collision. Just put that there. And maybe for this one, we'll go up a couple of octaves. And what kind of noise is noisy shapes. Yeah, so I reckon we could probably use meld a bit a bit like collision as well. Let's just make these very short bursts here. And then try it with some of these resonates. Okay, let's turn off oscillator B for a second. Okay, so let's turn on the scale awareness for meld. Go into the LFO, the matrix. Okay, well, maybe let's try and look at this filter. Okay, let's try and root LFO2 on engine one to the frequency. Let's set this to about 50. Let's go to LFO2 here and set this to a sample and hold. Turn the frequency all the way down. trigger on huh. interesting So yeah, you can kind of get like interesting bell sounds out of uh, melds, which is pretty mad. Very flexible synthesizer, really. It kind of does loads of stuff. Okay, I think what I might just do is use this as a little sort of twinkle, twinkle little star <laughs> sort of effect with a very, very, very low chance on all of these. And um, maybe I'll just put like a delay on it just to make a little bit of extra stuff happening in the background. Okay, let's hear it with, um, let's move all of these down to here and hear it with, and that as well, and hear it with this stuff. Oh, and our kick and clap, clap as well. stuff like this i like to put some beat repeats on the whole uh mix just sort of beat repeat everything it's uh something i've always enjoyed uh let's put this to something like that and this to something like 50. yeah
very, very, very weighty in the low end. That'll do. sort of comes along and gobbles up the music. <laughs> pretty cool i'm quite pleased with that so there you go i think that's all i really wanted to cover so basically you can kind of make some very interesting percussive bass lines with collision and then sample them reverse it then apply some interesting sort of reverbs where is it it's here isn't it apply some interesting reverb delays switch between all these different chains of delays whilst that's reversed resample that and then reverse that and layer it over the original and uh, you can get these um you know pretty mad sort of textures yeah kind of got like a pretty good um sort of texture rhythm beat texture bass i don't know it's all just sort of a bit of a collision i suppose <laughs> of various elements rhythms bass whatever okay there you go i hope you enjoyed that i'm gonna go and put this on my patreon now where if you'd like to support me there you can download the set plus many many more and make loads of cool new friends and we can all hang out and be great and also like and subscribe and invite your friends We'd like to just very quickly thank all my patrons for your ongoing support. It's amazing. And here is a quick picture of all your names on the screen right now. Make sure you spot yourself. Give yourself a little wave. Okay, thanks everyone. See you next time. Bye.